All right, functions. So we've we've shown you all types of different um, functions uh, that are already written into packages in R um, to really get you going and start you on some analysis. But R, the you know the really great thing about R is it's so extremely flexible um, that you can actually start to write your own functions um, for anything that you might want to do um, to streamline your analysis. So we know things like, you know, class and filter and um, dim, you know, are, are all functions and they, they all have these things that they do under the hood and they have certain assumptions. Um, so you might want to write some functions that sort of do their, your own flexible operations. Um, and you might do this to kind of cut down on repetitive code. So if there are um, changes to your to your your data um, or modifications of things um, that you do all the time, then you can write a function for it um, to just to kind of cut down on um, lines of code that just keep getting run over and over again. Um, you can also sort of organize your code into manageable chunks. So it's actually more readable um, to other people. If you have explained pretty well what your function already does and you just use it multiple times, then it can actually make um, it easier to kind of find bugs in your data. So for example, this is a very simple example. Um, you could just write a function um, that uh, multiplies the number x by two. So we'll just do some algebra here. Uh, and the structure of how to write a function is you create a new object called times two, um, and you have this function verb, and inside the parentheses of the, of the function, um, you are going to write uh, the requirements of that function. Um, so this function just requires the variable x. Um, and then this is a, an example of a, a quick function um, where you can just have function x is equal to x times two. And when you run that, you can just say x, you can assign x as 10 and it'll just output the, the result of that function. So just to open up a new R script just to kind of show this all to you. Um, I could also do times, we'll do times three. Um, function of x is x times three. And then I can say times three of x is equal to two. Should give me six, if I knew how to spell. Um, the thing about this is it's not actually, you're not saving this at all. It just is going to print this out into your output. So if you want to print, if you want to save the output from your function, you could just save that to a new object and it'll do that just fine. Um, you don't have to have the function, the, these curly brackets. Um, like I did in this example, as long as the contents of your function just fit on one line. Um, but if you have a pretty long function that does multiple operations, uh, use these curly these curly brackets. So you'll have times two function of x, open curly bracket, and then you can put x times two or anything else that might exist in your function. Um, within this, and then you close those curly brackets. Um, so this will work for my times two function as well. Um, you can also write functions that don't um, give you necessarily numerical output. Um, you can have it do a lot of different things. Um, so this is just a, an example of an operation that will give you a true false answer. Uh, so 
say I have a function X and it does this X um, percent percent. So if you remember from very early on, uh, percent percent means um, remainder. So it's going to divide by two um, and I'm and find what the remainder is after I divide by two. So if I take X and divide by two and the remainder is equal to zero, that means that the, the value is even. So when I test is even for X is equal to 11, I get false. Um, I could also put, I could kind of chain functions together just like you've already done. Um, so I could say is even of this function times two where X is equal to 10. So X is, should be 20. And when it does this, it knows that 20 is even and that's true. So I'll just kind of test this as well. So is even function of X, do my curly brackets. That percent two is exactly equal to zero. And then I can do is even X is equal to, 37, false. So a general syntax for writing a function is um, you assign it a new function, the function name. Um, you have to write function to say, to tell R that you are making a new function. Um, and then the inputs go in parentheses right after function. Um, and that could be just one thing, so one input or multiple inputs. And those inputs could be um, single numbers. They could be vectors. They could be data frames. It's very flexible. Um, and then if your function will let, sit on one line, it could go up right after this function um, with no curly brackets. Um, or you could have these open curly brackets and then close them after you've filled up um, all of the specifications of your function. Um, I didn't do anything here to show you about returning. I'll show you examples in a second. Um, these, these examples just sort of return the number after doing some of this math. Um, and that's just an automatic thing. Uh, but if you are doing a lot of operations in your function and you might have some intermediate steps, you might want to save only one output and then have it, the function return that value. Um, and so you actually specify that by saying return and then the whatever value within your function um, you want to return. And I'll show an example of that in a minute. So... Um, Let's do this function called times two plus four, where I'm gonna take X is my input and we'll do some several, like several intermediate steps here. So the first step is to take output intermediate is going to do this X times two. And then I'm gonna take output intermediate, add four, and return that to output as an object, and then return output. What you will notice, I'll let me, I can just run this really quick. And you'll kind of see something interesting about functions. So this puts it into my environment, right? I have a function that's available in my environment to use. Um, but all of this, like output, intermediate output, those are, those are objects that only exist inside the function and they don't actually get saved until your global environment at all. Um, so if I run this where X is equal to 10, it's just outputting 24 because I told it just to return output. But output intermediate doesn't exist in my environment and neither does output. In order for me to save it to my global environment, you still have to assign it to a new object. Cool. 
Okay. So use this return um, to tell the function exactly what object you want to, to print out to the console or to eventually save into a, one of your global environment. So printed results don't stay around, but they can show you what a function is doing. Um, the return results do stay around. Um, they get printed to your console, um, but you can only return one result. Um, so I can kind of, let me just do something in here to show you. Um, that it will print multiple results. Uh, but you have to tell it to print. Right, so it's printing output, output again, or right, printing output intermediate, printing output, and then returning output. Um, and if I do this, what do I get? So interestingly, so the function will print each of these things. It'll print 20, it'll print 24, but it's only ever gonna return one value for you. And that's 24. And that's kind of what we're doing here. So times two plus four, you're, you can say the times two result is equal to output intermediate. So um, you're telling it to print and then it'll give you this, but this where you're assigning it to the object, you know, object is result. And if I look at result, all I get is 24. And that is because the function only returns output. You can. Um, so you can actually string together. Um, I could I could give you an example of that really quick. So um you could do return C of output int and output. So you can do that, but just remember inside of a function, you have to follow the same rules of like assignment as you do inside your global environment. Um, you can also have uh, a function that uses multiple inputs. Um, so you might say times two plus y, and you would specify function is uh, requires input of x and input of y. Uh, and then a quick function like this, you could just do x times two plus y. Um, and so when I, I do that, It works great. Twenty-three. Um, functions can have one return result with multiple outputs, and that's kind of what I showed you here, well, like already. But I'll show that to you again. Um, what this is saying is, let's take x and add two and save that as one output and let's take y plus two and save that as another output and then return a, a vector of those two outputs um and you would specify you have to specify x and y separately so it is outputting this vector 12 and 5. Um, if I miss one of these, it won't work. It'll give you an error. It says Y is missing. So it knows that this function requires two inputs, X and Y. So if it's missing, it doesn't know. 
the, you can specify default values. Um, so if you forget, if you only end up specifying one, um, when it requires two, it can just fall back to using whatever default you've set. So let's change this function to have two different defaults. So the default for X is 10 and the default for Y is three. So if I were to only specify, if I don't specify anything after this, it'll still give me the right answer. It'll give me 12 and five. Because 12 plus, you know, 10 plus two or three plus two. Um, but I could also overwrite either of these, um, these intermediates. So I could say, if I only specify one, it's going to use 11 for X, but it's still gonna use three for Y. And I'll, it'll give you an updated result. Or you can, you can overwrite both of them. So 11 and four. We'll give you two different outputs. All right, let's write another function called square difference that takes two numbers, x and y, with default values of two and three. It takes the difference of those two values, then it squares the difference, and then returns the final value for you. All right, so SQ diff. is a function that takes arguments X and Y. And I'm gonna open this on a separate line and we'll do some intermediates here. So uh, int um, X minus Y. And then intermed square is going to be intermed squared. And then let's return intermed two. Um, and then this said default values of two and three. Cool. So if I run square difference with nothing in there, I should just get one, right? Because two minus three is negative one, square that is one. Um, but I could change this to X is equal to three. Um, and that should give me zero or we'll do 10, 49. Or, you know, I did it kind of with these intermediate steps. The alternative, you could just all do it in one line where you just say X minus Y in parentheses squared. Um, you can have any type of output you want in a function. Um, so you could have a, a function with characters. Um, and this one's really, really interesting. So we're going to make a function called loud um, that takes a word. So some just character string. Um, and then it's going to re repeat it five times um, and put it in uppercase. So this two upper, we'll just take a character string and make it all, all capitals. And then remember rep, we'll just repeat anything five times and then we'll return hooray. So when I give it hooray, it'll repeat hooray, hooray, hooray. Um, we can also use um, 
functions on tibbles um as long as we've had we've kind of in your input it's clear that you're that what's going in is is a data frame or a tibble um so if we have a function we can have data and then a particular number row and what this function will end up doing is take that data run a, a filter statement on that and it says for this i only want um these row numbers of my data that exactly match the row number that i'm giving it um so if i have this re this cars data set I can tell it I only want to. Um, I'm going to start with this. This car is one eight, so it's all I'm only working with um, columns one through eight of this cars variable, this cars data frame, and so my function get row will take cars one to eight. Um, and I say I only want row 10. Ah, it's because it's that, not that data. Great. So it's just telling me, it's just outputting the 10th row of this selected data set. Um, I could also do it on a different data set, get row, um, dat is equal to iris, row is equal to four. All right. So just the 10th, just the fourth row of that data set as well. Um, you could also do it on functions, or on, on, on columns. Um, so for instance, this one will take a tibble or a data frame um, and a particular row and a, a particular column, and it'll say, let's filter only to the, the number, the numbered row that I give it. Um, and then just the column, um, you know, this this numbered column. And so we actually use this tidy select um operation called all of um, that will just say give me all of the all of the um, data in this particular numbered row so this function get index i can just say cars row 10 column 8 um, and say so one two three four five six seven eight so it's giving me this 10th row eighth column and it's outputting that as as a tibble here. So a one by one tibble of this 500. Um, you can also include default values as well. Um, this one will just give you, you know, the first row and the first column of a particular data set as well. In that case, um in this data that's the first column is the ref id and then of course the row number is one so it would just be this one okay functions all you need to do is have a new object that will be the name of your function the the word function with parentheses any sort of input that you're putting in there um and x plus y um or or you know whatever you're actually doing inside of your function um you can specify defaults um and then if you're doing a bunch of intermediate steps but only want one output um you will just and you want a particular output um, you would put that inside the return statement inside of your function. Um, 
And that return, you could also kind of concatenate multiple things together um, that are inside of your function. If you want to save all the intermediate steps as well, um, you can put that inside of the return. Um, and if you just want to make sure that your 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 function is working right, um, you could have print statements inside. Um, but just note note that those printed things are not actually being saved. Um, only what's inside return gets saved. Okay, let us actually start with part one of the lab, um, and then we can come back. And I will finish up with um, kind of larger using functions on lar data frames um, as well. So just we'll get through part one, which is just sort of these simple functions. All right, everyone. Let's get back to it with the second half of functions. Um, so you can actually take any function that you've customized um, or existing functions, um, and you can apply them all at once um, to another object, um, say a vector, a list, or a data frame. frame. Um, so this there's another function that will allow you to apply your functions um, to other objects um, called sapply. Um, so the structure of S apply um, includes, you know, the first ob first input is um, some sort of vector, a list, or a data frame, um, and then some function that you want to run. Um, and that function does not have to be in quotes or backticks or anything. Uh, it doesn't have to include the, you know, the open close parentheses. Um, S apply just knows that when you supply it with a function as an object, um, it knows that that's the function to apply. Um, and then after this function, you can also um, specify any sort of like um, specifications to that function as well. Um, yeah, no parentheses on this function. Um, you can also pipe into your function as well. Um, so take our very, you know, Iris data set, this famous one that we've used so many different times. Um, and you can take Iris as the as an input and say, run S apply on Iris. And the function that I'm going to be applying to Iris is class. And what S apply will do is for each of the columns of Iris, it's going to run this function class on those columns. So it's just, you know, each column of the data set, it's treating it like a vector and saying, what is the class of this column? And so for all the numeric columns, it says that it's numeric. And then this last one, this species, it says that it's a factor. Um, you could also pipe into it. So you can just take iris and say s apply of class. And this is a these two um, examples of code are, are equivalent to each other. Um, so give you a, another example with a, a kind of a different data set. Um, let's use empty cars because we love using empty cars. Um, I could pipe that one in. I'm not going to write pipe. Uh, okay. S apply um, of class. And it'll show me all, all of those are actually numeric. <laughs> exactly, legendary data sets. Um, okay, so we've got, let's just look at um, our cars data set. Um, and it can, can um, apply a custom function that you've already written. So for this times two function, um, it will just take vehicle age and vehicle year, right? So we've we've selected cars 
we've selected these columns, vehicle year and vehicle age. Um, and then it says run S apply on them and use this function on each of those columns. So for each column, it's going to multiply it by two and then output it. Um, so 2006 times two is four, um, 4,012. Yeah, those are all like if there's a contiguous list of columns that you want, you can just use that. But if they are not contiguous, you have to put them in a like a concatenated list. Like you have to specify them individually. But if you have like one that's over on the left side of your data set, but then like four contiguous ones, you can actually do like um you can go like this. So like C um column one. Uh, column one and then column five through eight, right? So you can just do it that way too. Thanks. Yes, or you could use your tidy help your tidy select functions like contains and starts with, um, and we'll we'll show a few more like that. Um, you can also you don't have to do these s apply um operations on functions that exist already um you can actually just pass it a a fun a new function that you um are making on the fly um so what i'm doing here is saying okay for these columns vehicle year and, and vehicle age let's actually run this new function that i'm going to write that just takes x and divides it by a thousand so in that case, vehicle year 2006 turns to 2.006, and vehicle age um, goes from 3 to 0.003. So what this will do, uh, this if you do it on the fly like this, um, it will not save it to your global environment. That function doesn't exist outside of this S apply statement. Function X is just saying that anything that follows after this, so it's just saying, I'm, I'm specifying a function right here, a function of X, and anything that follows that is the contents of the function. So this is a way of writing a function kind of on the fly. So when once you've written function, it's telling R that anything that follows is a function. That was why we did it with like this select function here. Um, but if you want to actually apply it to only a single fun a single column, I would use a mutate. Okay, yeah, we're gonna learn a function in a second. <laughs> okay, another one um, that's very useful for working in like tidy data and across columns in the data in um, that you might see if you just want to apply a function across um, multiple columns of a data set, then across is a really, really powerful function. So you can actually use it to apply the same transformation to multiple columns of your data. And what you would usually, you would use that sort of inside of a summarize or a mutate statement. Um, so what that looks like is, um, say you've taken a bunch of data um, and you've selected whichever columns you're wanting to look at, um, and now you want to do a summary function. Um, say, I wanna just look at the means of all of the columns in my data. Well, what you would just do is say, summarize and then across uh and then it requires these two arguments dot calls um where you specify the columns that you want to run this on um so this could uh, this could be you know just a list of columns it could be just like that um column one column uh colon column column eight right to get all columns one through eight 
Um, or you could use sort of one of these tidy select things um, to specify which columns uh, um, fitting of certain criteria to put in there. Um, the second argument is this dot FNS or functions, which is the function that you want to run. Um, and then dot, dot, dot could include any additional arguments for the function. Um, so say for if your function is mean, you would want to specify na is equal to rm, uh, na dot rm is equal to true here, right after you've claimed mean as the function. All right, so if we take um, sort of cars, let me actually run this. I don't remember where cars is. Uh, I know where, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be super lazy right now and load it because you watched me save this into my environment. There, there's cars. I don't have to worry about going back to the original data set. Okay, so cars double. So what this is doing is saying cars and select the make of the car um, or select the make of the car and then anything else, any other columns uh, that start with VEH. Uh, and we'll just take a look at that really quick. Okay, so that's selected make and then vehicle year, vehicle age, vehicle. So any of these columns that started with this, these first three, three letters. Um, starts with is one of these sort of like tidy select. Um, so if you're interested in any of those, um, I encourage you to kind of look at the, the help for those. So there's a bunch of them that are really useful. Um, wait, it's not there. Um, forget where the help is for that. Um, Ava or Carrie, can you find the one? Like, oh, there it is. There's a whole bunch of detail, like a bunch of different functions, um, like starts with and contains and other things that you can use for selecting columns. Um, what you're doing here is like cars double and saying, make a summary of that one. And then across all of these columns, so dot calls everything, which means basically all the columns that I already had, um, and then calculate a mean on that. Yeah, so mean already exists. Um, so it will run, it'll run just fine for these numerical columns. So vehicle gear, vehicle age, but it, it'll give you an NA for make because it doesn't know how to calculate a mean for a character. And you're just across all of these different, these columns. Um, you can also put that inside of a group by. Um, so what this will say is um, for each different make, you know, brand of car, then calculate the mean across these columns. So you'll get a different value, um, a mean value for each of these car, car makes. Um, yeah, this is really good. Okay. You can also run it with NA is equal to um, RM is equal to NA dot RM is equal to true. If it's throwing you an error, um, it doesn't seem like anything was going wrong here. Um, 
with this do this code because um there were not many NAs there. What is this argument? Okay, this is a warning. All right, there are lots of different tidy select options um, that we can use to um, select columns. Um, so there's things like starts with or ends with or contains. Um, so we've used this starts with one, um, but you could also, you know, the same thing, you would get the same results if you did um, select contains vehicle. Right. Because it also, it doesn't matter. It's just saying that it contains this string of three letters, no matter where, where it shows up um, in the, the string of the column name. Um, you can also combine it with a mutate. Um, so for instance, you might want to just take whatever numbers you have in your data set, and you might want to round them to the nearest whole number or to the you know power of 10 or something like that. What this is doing is it's saying, take this car's double, um, you know, this, this thing that's just these vehicle columns. Um, and I'm actually only going to run it on these vehicle columns. I'm actually going to, even though this car's double contains make, um, by saying, specifying the cars that start with vehicle, it's only going to run it on these numerical ones. It's going to run the function round. Um, and then uh, this digits negative three is actually going to run round to the nearest um, power of 10. So all of those original numbers, um, like vehicle age, which was supposed to be like, you know, three, five, 10, that all gets rounded down to zero. Vehicle year just gets rounded down to 2000. And then these odometer and cost values get rounded as well. So what we're, what we're showing here is like, um, you can do a summarize on these, um, or you can also do a, a um, mutate. So if you want to just modify the existing values in a data set, um, then you would use a mutate. But if you want to do some sort of like summary statistics, like the mean, um, or accounting account of something in the data set, then you would use a summarize. But what this across does allows you to apply a function across multiple columns. Um, say, for instance, we want to, um, in a set of values that we're working with, we might want to replace. Um, some of the the missing values. Um, so I don't know if we've actually covered this function in the class yet, but there's a really function, a really nice dplyr R function called um, replace in a. Uh, and what it does is um, in a if you are working on a data frame, um, you would supply actually the list of values that you would want to replace. Um, or if it's just a vector, um, you, and you can just replace a single value. So if I have, for instance, like, um, vector one is one, two, three, NA, I could run replace NA on vector one and replace that last thing with four and it'll work fine. Um, data frames are a little more complicated. I don't want to get into it yet. 
Um, but to explain this for, um, you could you could run replace in a across multiple columns in a data set with this across function. So we'll run it, read in our mortality data set. And we're going to start with just the columns of the 1940s by selecting country, um, which we've renamed from that weird dot, dot, dot one. So we're selecting the country column and then any columns that start with 194, so the 1940s. Um, and then we're applying replace in a is our function that we're applying across these three columns 43 44 and 45 um and then just within this replace in a i'm saying replace any na's with zero and we'll see that all of the other na's that existed in the other 1940s that we weren't selecting in here still have the NAs in there, uh, but all the NAs in those three years have been replaced with zeros. Um, you can also use, you know, custom functions within mutate and across. Um, so let's write a function that says multiply X by a thousand. And then what this will do is say, take air quality, which just is, it's a data set that's, it's a common data set in R. Um, so we've got ozone, solar radiation, wind, temperature, month, day, and then I'm saying across all of these columns, which they're all numeric and it should work fine. So everything will include all of these columns. Let's multiply everything by a thousand and then show me only the first two values. So with this head, so 40, 41 has been multiplied. Um, and then there's a bunch of NAs in there which would probably be still NA because it doesn't know what to do. Like it can't run the times a thousand on NA, but we're just showing the first two values here. This is just to show you that you can run um, across using a custom function that you've written. Um, I could also just run it inside here. So let's um, remove times a thousand and then just run it inside here. Same output. So there, this function, this times a thousand function doesn't exist outside of this call to across, but it still works just fine. Um, another package that's really useful is the the per package. I don't know if if anybody like trills their R's when they say this one. I hope somebody does. Um, but the per package is um, one that allows you to apply a function to multiple columns in a data frame or multiple data objects in a list. Um, so say if you have a long list of data frames um, that you're working with and you want to just apply this function across the board. Um, you can use this per package. Um, and the, the function that's really useful is called mapdf. Um, and what mapdf will do is you could say, take air quality, this data set I have, um, and across the data frame, I want to replace any NA that exists and replace it with zero. Um, so just re to remind you, 
what the in it this value this thing looks like that you know the within the first 10 values um there were several NAs there was an NA here on five and uh row 10 on five row five both of those have been replaced and on row 10 the single NA has been replaced with zero so this map underscore df function from the per package is really good for just applying a um, a function across the board of a data set. Um, you can also run functions on multiple data frames. Um, so let's make a new data set, a new list where we have just air quality added to itself multiple times. So, so AQ list is just, um, actually I don't want to output this. Let's, let's do it this way. AQ list. So we've just got this same data frame three times in a list. I can actually apply, um, use s apply I, functions um, to look at all of the data frames in that list. So what this will do is just kind of within, for each of the data frames in the list, it will run the function. So in this one, we're running just class on s apply. So it knows that this first one is a, they're all three of them are data frames. You could also like calculate how many rows are in each data frame. So there's 153 in each, or you could run something like column means um, because all of these data columns in air quality are numeric. Um, this works great. So it'll give you a mean for each of those columns across it. So if you really just want to kind of get a, if you have a long data set that you've kind of strung together as a list, you could use S apply as a way of um, just looking across each of those columns um, and seeing what's going on. Okay, so we've covered S apply, which you can apply to some sort of a vector or a list or a data frame. Um, and apply some function to it. Um, within a data frame, um, you could sort of do a, a mutate statement where you can apply a function across columns of a data frame um, just to, as, a, as, as a modifying operation, or you could summarize something. So if you want to calculate um, the means of three columns in your data set that are right next to each other, then you could just do across um, and put kind of put that together with some of these tidy select functions and say, okay, select these three columns and give me a summary of each of their means. Um, per is really helpful um, for kind of applying things across a data frame. Um, and you can work on multiple data frames within lists simultaneously with S apply and per. Really what we're trying to do is, is streamline some of your work um, so you don't have to kind of repeat operations multiple times across multiple columns. If you're just wanting to use the same function across the board, then these are really powerful uh, functions. So S apply and across. All right. That is the end. We will go into the lab, but this is the last. That's this is the last lecture slide. So you've made it. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! <Yeah. laughs>